Richard, let's jump right into this. This administration, shortly after coming into office, counteracted a lot of the attacks on religious freedom in this country with an executive order. That's right. That's right, Tony. And, and uh, you know, folks, I just want to mention something here about r religious freedom. It is the first freedom in the Bill of Rights, and it's the first for a reason, because all of our freedoms depend upon that freedom. You see, the, the goal of the enemy is to silence the church, and that's what we're dealing with here. And thank God we have a president who has taken a stand for religious liberty. Within four months of his inauguration, he signed an executive order that said that it would be the policy of the United States government to vigorously enforce protections under federal law for religious liberty across the board. And also he said in that, in that executive order, he also said that he di directed the IRS to take no adverse action against any religious organization or house of worship for speaking out on political or moral issues, uh, so long as they're not violating. Or, yeah. That's right. So a very a very important step, first step in the Trump administration that I believe has reset the tone and the agenda in the federal government. In just a, a few moments, we're going to hear from one of our pastors in California, but California has been really at the tip of the spear in a negative sense of outright attacking biblical views as, and the practice of religious freedom. That's right. T tell us about that, Richard. Well, over the last year, one of the most alarming uh, headlines, and you guys may remember this, was there was a bill introduced in the California legislature. Uh, it was AB 2943. People called it the Bible ban. But this bill made it would have made it illegal to uh, uh, practice sexual orientation change therapy. That's code word for no pastor and no counselor and no psychologist could legally help someone leave the gay lifestyle in, even if they wanted to. It was a direct assault on, on, the, on the Great Commission, if you will, on freedom of religion and freedom of expression. And you know the good thing though, Tony, the good news about that was what happened. The church rallied. Pastors rallied. Organizations like Family Research Council and ADF came together. 400 former homosexuals people who God had delivered from that lifestyle came and were available to testify before that House committee. And the, the, author, the author of that bill, after hearing from so many Christians, actually, now what had happened, it had passed one house, got amended in the second and passed, and was back to the first house, and it was on the verge of becoming law, and that, uh, the author of that bill withdrew it because of what the church did. An example of what happens when we stand for that truth. Exactly right. There's another area of, of uh, change in Washington, D.C. under this administration. Not only domestically have they been restoring religious freedom, but it's in our foreign policy as well. The first ever ministerial to advance religious freedom was held back in July of this month with over 80 different countries coming to America to hear about what America is doing and wants to see happen on religious freedom. Oh yeah, it's, it's amazing what this administration is doing to protect religious liberty abroad. Uh, time doesn't permit us to go into it, Tony, but one of, the, one of the most wonderful things happened just a couple of weeks ago because of the pressure and diplomacy of the Trump administration. Pastor Andrew Brunson, who was wrongfully imprisoned in Turkey because of his faith, was released. And uh, I think you can see behind us an incredible picture of... That's right. And, and, and Tony, I think you had the, the amazing privilege of actually being involved in that process. And it would be awesome to hear a little bit from your perspective on that. Well, I, I was asked to, to be there uh, in, in Turkey for his last hearing. And when he amazingly was released, and it's a story in itself, it was not anticipated, he was released. The White House asked me to escort him home, and so I was with him flying from Turkey back to the United States where he prayed for the President of the United States. And this administration worked on this day in and day out. Richard, you're absolutely right. Religious freedom is a top priority for this administration, and that's why we have to continue standing with him. Richard, right. thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Tony. All right.